popping off for Pepsi, crushing it for Calvin, and living off L'Oreal. Sure, they sizzled back in the day, but you won't believe what these OG supermodels are doing now. Just being able to point a iPhone and take a selfie doesn't make you a supermodel. Sorry. Cindy Crawford signed with Elite Model Management in the 80s, but she became a household name in the 90s for hosting MTV's House of Style. Suddenly, she was everywhere. In 1990, she covered British Vogue and starred in George Michael's Freedom 90 music video. Then in 92, her Super Bowl Pepsi commercial would become one of the most iconic to date, and her celeb status only grew after she married actor Richard Gere in 91. So this is not a lifetime dream for you to be a model? No, it's not something that I grew up wanting to do. Crawford launched her skincare line Meaningful Beauty in 2004, and according to People, the model extended the line to include hair care products by 2021. Take care of yourself. Then it's, it's not aging, you're just living. Along with her daughter, Kaya Gerber, she covered Vogue Paris in 2016. The pair also shared the runway for late designer Virgil Abloh's collection for Off-White in 2022. Kate Moss stood out with her waifish figure and sultry eyes. But as her hard partying and drug use became highly publicized, so did her grunge style and rebel spirit, landing her on a slew of magazines and ads. Then in 2005, Moss was involved in a drug scandal that nearly ruined her career. According to The Telegraph, she was dropped by H&M as well as Chanel and Burberry. Moss was later cleared of any charges, and the work returned. The model's controversial personal life involved dating bad boys like Johnny Depp and Pete Doherty. And the now infamous quote, nothing tastes as good as skinny feels, was also attributed to her, sparking outrage. Still, her reputation made her a legend in the industry. You are like perfume. You only need one drop. Moss has since taken on the role of designer, working with Topshop and Longchamp. She also founded the London-based Kate Moss Agency in 2016, of course, she continues to model, and in 2022, she shot for the Marc Jacobs Resort collection. Christy Turlington's career saw her become the face of Calvin Klein Eternity in the late 80s, which she later returned to in 2014 with her husband Ed Burns. She also starred in music videos for Duran Duran and George Michael, and she walked countless runways for Valentino, Dolce & Gabbana, and Chanel and covered Vogue a whopping 74 times. Charlington later switched things up, focusing on advocating for global maternal health. After debuting her documentary, No Woman No Cry, she launched her nonprofit organization, Every Mother Counts, in 2010. Over a decade later, she published the book Arrival Stories, featuring birthing experiences from women in entertainment. Sharing her own difficult journey after welcoming her daughter Grace, Turlington shared with Good Morning America, well, my experience really opened my eyes and I, my first thought was like, how do we make it better for the next mother? She reunited with her model pals, Cindy Crawford and Helena Christensen in December 2022. With Crawford posting to Instagram, nothing gets me in the holiday spirit more than catching up with family and friends. Linda Evangelista's career skyrocketed when fashion photographer Peter Lindbergh suggested she chop off her hair. Just after she got the pixie cut, Lindbergh recalled to Harper's Bazaar, she cried for two hours. The white shirt picture of her was taken the next day, and a new woman was born. She was a good model, but she became the model. Evangelista posted again for Lindbergh for the iconic British Vogue cover. She was also a muse for Karl Lagerfeld, having walked in her first show for Chanel in 85 and again in 2003. According to People, Evangelista stepped away from the spotlight after suffering injuries from several body fat freezing sessions in 2015. She filed a lawsuit for $50 million in damages, with CNN reporting that the suit was settled in June 2022. Evangelista triumphantly returned to the runway after 15 years to close the Fendi show in September 2022, and she also posed for British Vogue that same month. Helena Christensen ruled the runway, having been one of the first ever Victoria's Secret Angels. She was known for her campaigns with CoverGirl and Prada, and she famously starred in Chris Isaac's music video for Wicked Games. He falls in love with me and it's very sad. <laughs> but that's the way it is sometimes, you know? These days, she's still going strong. In 2017, she closed the Versace Spring 2018 show along with some of her pals, and she appeared in Dolce & Gabbana's Spring-Summer 2019 campaign. More recently, in February 2022, she walked in Off-White's Fall 2022 Paris show. 
Besides modeling, Forbes reported that in 2014, Christensen became the creative director of the fragrance line Strange Love NYC. She's also a professional photographer, having shot Gigi Hadid for Vogue and The Weeknd for Notion magazine. Since 2019, the model has also been an ambassador for Goodwill. Claudia Schiffer was just about everywhere in the 90s. She became the face of Guest Jeans in 1989, which she celebrated for the brand's 30th anniversary in 2012, and the first model to cover People, Rolling Stone, and Vanity Fair. She's walked countless runways, appeared in ad campaigns, and has been a L'Oreal ambassador since 1997. When asked about the moment she knew she was one of the biggest models of the 90s, she told another magazine, when the other girls and I were on the cover of every magazine and in every campaign. I definitely didn't want to become famous either. That was not one of my goals or dreams ever. I suddenly had people coming up on, on the street to me asking for my autograph, which was a very, very strange feeling. At one time, Schiffer held the Guinness World Record for most magazine covers, with more than 1,000 to her name, according to Forbes. Her runway appearance for Yves Saint Laurent in 2002 was supposed to be her last but she returned in 2017 for Versace. Schiffer collaborated with Frame for a 90s-inspired clothing line in 2022, and two years earlier, she covered Elle France, shot for Harper's Bazaar UK, and won GQ's Woman of the Year Award. Tatiana Patitz also appeared on the iconic January 1990 issue of British Vogue, and of course, she was among the models to appear in George Michael's Freedom 90 music video, as well as over 200 magazine covers across the globe. Petites eventually found a new passion as an animal rights activist. She was first inspired by aiding African wildlife, telling Kendall Conrad, I am a proud foster parent of eight elephant babies at the David Sheldrick Wildlife Trust. She also raised two horses on her ranch in Malibu and became an ambassador for the American Wild Horse Sanctuary, according to Vogue. As far as her decidedly lower-key lifestyle was concerned, she told Prestige, I'm a mom. I wear jeans and t-shirts and comfortable dresses. I've always loved Dior, Chanel, Tom Ford, but when you live in semi-nature like I do, you don't run around in high heels and fabulous clothes. You just don't. It's more jeans and riding boots. Petites died of cancer on January 11, 2023 at 56. Naomi Campbell is synonymous with the word supermodel. She made history as the first black woman to appear on the cover of French Vogue, and she dominated the runways. And even though she made a few headlines for being tough to work with, that reputation hasn't overshadowed her unstoppable career. I've always said that I'm not a saint, that I am a work in progress. In September 2022, Campbell closed Todd's Spring Summer 2023 show, and shortly after, she walked for Hugo Boss, Messica High Jewelry, Burberry, and Alexander McQueen. She also covered British Vogue in March and Vogue Arabia in November 2022. But Campbell's life changed forever when she became a mom at age 50 in 2021, much to the shock of fans around the globe. As she recalled to British Vogue, I can count on one hand the number of people who knew that I was having her, but she is the biggest blessing I could ever imagine. It's the best thing I've done. And I'm so grateful to God that I got to be a mom. Carla Bruni made a name for herself in the late 80s, walking for Chanel and nabbing a campaign for guests. She then rocked the 90s, working for Versace, Yves Saint Laurent, and Christian Dior. Bruni then quit modeling altogether in 1997 to focus on a music career, and she's released six albums since. She explained her relaxed, off-duty look for her first album cover, telling Vogue, I wanted to give another message, which was, this is all gonna be about the music. In 2008, Bruni married then-French president Nicolas Sarkozy, and once he left office, she returned to the runway in 2017 for Versace. Eva Herzegova was considered the Marilyn Monroe of the 90s. After appearing in the very successful Wonder Bra ad in 94, the model's career took off. She landed Sports Illustrated swimsuit, guest campaigns, Victoria's Secret shows, and Vogue covers all over the world. Herzegova is still very active in the industry today. She starred in campaigns for Roberto Cavalli and Bottega Veneta in 2017, and covered Vogue in 2019 and Elle Spain in 2021. She also appeared in the Dolce & Gabbana Spring 2019 campaign and walked in the Schiaparelli Fall Winter 2022 show. So how has she managed such a successful career over literal decades? As Herzegova told Elle in 2010, I've been doing it for 20 years, and I would never have expected it. There's the return of the supermodels from the 90s, and I think that's because they have a story to tell that people can connect to. Stephanie Seymour made a splash in Victoria's Secret catalogs, 
Playboy, and the Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Issue. According to Vogue, she was also one of the very first Victoria's Secret Angels, and is known as one of the OG supermodels of the 90s. But Seymour also made headlines for her personal life. She dated elite model management founder John Casablancas, who was 26 years older and also married at the time. She then married and divorced guitarist Tommy Andrews, dated Charlie Sheen and Warren Beatty, and Guns N' Roses frontman Axl Rose. She also famously starred in the band's video for Don't Cry and November Rain. I like to just give myself to the process. Seymour is still hot on the modeling circuit, posing for the Ferragamo 2007-2008 campaign. She's shot for Vogue France in 2018, covered Vogue Italia in 2019, and closed the fall 2019 Versace show. When she's not modeling, Seymour runs her lingerie company Raven & Sparrow, which she launched in 2017. Shalom Harlow was discovered at a Cure concert in 1989 when she was 16 years old. From there, she walked for Chanel, Yves Saint Laurent, and Valentino, landed the cover of Vogue, and stunned in campaigns for Versace and Christian Dior. In 1996, she hosted MTV's House of Style, taking over for Cindy Crawford, and she made her acting debut in 1997's In and Out. Her most notable role came in 2003 with How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. I wasn't a blonde and I was on the cover of Vogue. It was significant. The model took a step back from her career in the 2000s because of her health. Having been diagnosed with Lyme disease, parasites, and black mold poisoning, she told in style, I did have complex PTSD from the level of infections in my body. My unhealed physical, mental, and emotional wounds had finally caught up with me. Harlow returned to the runway for the Spring 2019 Versace show, and she continued her streak with the Ralph Lauren Spring 2023 collection. She's also shot for Mugler and Moschino, and she graced the covers of Vogue Japan and Vogue Poland. Kristen McMenemy stood out from the pack thanks to her androgynous look. According to Vogue, she was a natural redhead when she began her career. But once she chopped off her locks and dyed her hair black, people took notice. In 1993, she became a muse for Karl Lagerfeld, splitting her time with Calvin Klein and Versace. Everyone would say, wow, Kristen is really cool. She doesn't care what she looks like. And I'm like, wow, she's... Having gone gray hair chic, McMenemy has worked well into the 2000s. In 2010, designers Victor and Rolf featured McMenemy for a jaw-dropping runway performance piece. Eight years later, she opened the Valentino Spring-Summer 2019 show. And in 2021, she opened up the Fendace show. In 2022, the 57-year-old walked for Jean-Paul Gaultier, but made headlines for taking a tumble on the runway. Whether it's back in the 90s or the Valentino show at Paris Fashion Week, McMenemy always makes a statement. The 90s runway could never be complete without Tyra Banks. She signed with Elite Model Management in 1990, but she hit it big as a model for Victoria's Secret. She then went on to become the first black woman to cover GQ and the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue in the late 90s. In 2003, Banks became a fixture on the small screen hosting America's Next Top Model and later The Tyra Banks Show. Banks won two Daytime Emmy Awards for her efforts. The supermodel has also hosted seasons 12 and 13 of America's Got Talent and Dancing with the Stars since season 29. Mogul, model, mother, professor. Banks' more recent advocacy for body positivity comes from her own experience in breaking the typical model mold. As she told Sports Illustrated, I am telling people that beauty comes in all shapes and sizes and ages. I have to put my money where my mouth is. I have to make sure my message is pure.